Martin, and welcome to the Zoning Board of Appeals meeting for July of 2014. Carol, could you please take the roll? Mr. Crockett? Mr. Dillon? Here. Mr. Loisel? Here. Mr. Masisso? Here. Mr. Richard? Here. Mr. Stanhope? Here. Mr. Stark? Here. Great. I'd like to start the meeting by having a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Gentlemen, I hope you had a chance to look at the uh, meeting minutes and like a motion or comments on those. I move to approve as, uh, as submitted. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. I'd like to welcome the newest member that we have on our board, uh, Tom Stanhope is uh, now our second alternate, so we have a full board, and I appreciate your interest in joining us, and if you've got any questions, we appreciate it. Okay. Don't be afraid to ask them as we go along, because right. a lot of it's new. Sure. And uh, we'll try and explain as we go as well. Okay. So, Looking welcome forward to board. Yes. Uh, right now, we're going to authorize uh, Mr. Richard to vote this evening, because we need an, an alternate, so. Are you ready for it? I'm ready. All right, I knew you would be. <laughs> All right, we're going to start with our first appeal this evening, which is Appeal 2524, Practical Difficulty Appeal from Barbara Foley, 8 First Street, uh, Map U47, Parcel 61A, and she wants to construct a second garage bay 10 feet from the side property line in the R2 zone. If you could approach, as you have, approach the podium, <laughs> state your name, and if you could just explain your appeal to us. And I know you've been here before, so you're used to it by now. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Barbara Foley. I'm the owner of 8 First Street. Um, I was here last month totally unprepared, and I thank you for letting me table <laughs> last month. We appreciate it. We ag I, um, I went back. I'm trying to, I have a, currently have a one-car garage, and I would like to add an extra bay onto my garage to store my second vehicle year-round at my home. Um, after last month's meeting, I got together with Mr. Longstaff, and we found a lot of information in the original property uh, folder of mine. Um, and at the May, the May meeting, uh, I believe it was you that asked, Mr. Luzel, that asked a question whether any plans had ever, ever been submitted on that property. There hadn't been because the prior owner was never able to build on it. Um, looking back through the, and I've included that in my packet, mm -hmm. the letters to the um, town, there was a five-year moratorium put on digging up the streets after the sewer project went through, and I've confirmed that. Um, with Mike Shaw that the, Mr. Jagir at the time, the director, could do that. I then c called the sanitary district and spoke to Dave Hughes. He looked back into the records and said 1989 was when my street was done. Excellent. So that proved back my five-year moratorium that they couldn't build to get the p water in onto the property. Okay. Um, so... And that's in his letter dated May 29, 1991, to the town. We didn't find any response from the town on that letter. Um, so they were, in 1990, they were, couldn't build right when they, from the get-go. Um, so I, in my opinion, I would think that the, the moratorium on not being able to build, to dig up the street would cause a practical difficulty down the road for any future owner because they, couldn't construct a house prior to July 3rd, 1991 on that lot. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. I feel caused the practical difficulty that I'm facing now because I can't apply for the yard size reduction. Uh, my additional information on question four, uh, I added, this is some more notes added to, um, from what I've submitted on my uh, last submission. I talked with Sue uh, in the town assessor's office, and for taxes, looking at my my property, she said a tandem garage and a two-car garage prices out the same, which would be about $11,700. Um, 
I also stopped at uh, Caldwell Banker in Cape Elizabeth when I was in the area just to talk to a real estate agent for some advice on where I could do some research on tandem garages and values and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, they didn't have anything, and I explained what I was doing, and the, the broker said that it wasn't, a tandem garage wasn't practical. And she suggested that I call Beacon Appraisal, which I did. She said they can give you um, prices for when somebody goes to the bank to get the loan, what the appraisal value would be. And I spoke to Chris at Beacon Appraisal, and he um, said the contributing value for a tandem garage is 2000 and a conventional two-car garage can be anywhere from 5000 to $7,500. So, and he also said marketability for a tandem is, is less than conventional two-car wide gar garages. Um, then my contractor and I got together and we did some measuring out in the back of my house and everything and my slope that goes off the back of my, in my backyard, he said it's roughly about a four foot slope off and to build up walls and everything to bring, mm -hmm. to make the tandem, it's more expensive than going side by side where the ground is pretty much level. And in my packet I included a picture of, um, my backyard is fenced in and you can see I have a panel and then the next one drops down so you can see that my lot does drop in the back and slope down and I also have drainage issues that drain, how it drains off so that would also be more grading to make sure the drainage doesn't affect anybody on either side of me and since my house was constructed my neighbors put an accessory unit on so that would have to be taken in as a factor to not to flood her out or cause her water. And as I issues. face the front of your home, is it to the left? The yes. The owner to the left has an accessory unit? Yes. Okay. Yes. And she has no opposition to it. Um, so the previous owner, um, he, he just wanted to build the house on there to take care of his grandfather and unfortunately his grandfather passed away before he could do anything so he in turn sold the, the lot to me. Okay. Um, is, is there anything else you wanted to add? We, we heard this case last month. Yes. And uh, Mr. Richard, I think you were here as well. I was. Yes. And were you voting last month or not? I was. Okay. And it looks like we have our permanent member, so you're going to have to step back, and you will be alternate again. I was ready to. I know. <laughs> maybe, maybe next time. <laughs> so it, it's just to do a tandem garage, economically, to me, it's not feasible. I would take a – it would cost me more to build it. I wouldn't get as much back in resale value, and it would be harder to, to – um, to market and anybody, you know, I know you guys can't take personal opinions into this, but you figure people out looking for a car a house and it says two car garage, they want side by side, they don't want one, one behind the other. And if you find that you have two houses, one with a tandem and one with a two car, within somebody's price range and comparable that they, they would, could choose either one, they're going to go for the, two, the side by sides. Mr. Chairman, could I address a question? Well, if, if you just give me one minute. Uh, Mr. Dillon, you were not here last correct. week, uh, last month, that's correct? Correct. Have you had a chance to look back through the notes and feel comfortable in that you understand? I have, and I do. Okay. Thank you. So we won't have to repeat what we did from last, uh, last meeting. Okay, go right ahead. Um, I, I just would like you to address the drainage issue a little bit. You say there's a drainage issue on the lot. Does that include the entire lot or the back of, 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 the, of the house, or where, where is your ba drainage problem? Basically, it's in the back. Um, in the wintertime, behind my back panels, a fence, there's like a river that goes almost through there. We had a drainage um, project put in a few years ago, and if I, we get a heavy rain, I have, I'm one of the few houses probably in the neighborhood that has the drainage tiles and I can see from my kitchen window where my tiles come out and where it drains into and um, one of my corner fence posts we didn't even we just let the water drain in and put the cement in and then put the post in so so, so what would if you did a, 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 a tandem garage is two car deep 
what would that do to that drainage? We would have to it, we would have to compensate for it with with grading. Okay. And things. And the other thing is, um, I forgot to mention, the garage uh, the fence also goes off the back corner of the garage now. The added expense of moving and readjusting the fence is an added expense too, because um, the way we measured, it doesn't come out to an even panel. Okay. The fencing. Thank you. And Mr. Longstaff, do you have any comments on this particular appeal? Uh, no, I think I said everything that I needed to say in the staff comments. Um, I know, I know it's uh, it's always a temptation of the board to try to redesign a project when it comes before you. Come on, I mean, now. I want to try to help the appellant, and right. I think that's admirable, but it's probably not a good practice. It's better to let the applicant or the appellant present their facts and then you just decide on those facts. Certainly. If you have questions or need other information as you did last time uh, to either table and request additional information, that's perfectly appropriate and a good way to do it. But I'd just ask the board to refrain from trying to re-engineer re the project on on, uh, on site here because it's really not a not board job to do that. Certainly <laughs> think that's good advice. Some, some other problems down the road. Yes. Um, as helpful as, as, as it is, or you think it may be, it's really not a, an appropriate practice. So I just I would only add that. I think you guys are uh, in the process here of gathering the evidence that you need to make your your uh, determination. Stay on that course, and you're doing you're doing your job. Certainly, thank you. That uh, the advice is appreciated. Uh, looking for questions or comments from the board. Uh, yeah, Mr. Chair, I yes. just had a quick question. For Mr. Longstaff, did and I don't have my phone with me, which everything comes on. And I apologize for being late. I guess that's it. No problem. Um, <coughs> did we address that question about whether or not the action taken is something we should be considering or not? The self-created hardship. Right. Um, yeah. There's actually. I did a little digging and I sought out some legal opinions on self-created hardship. There's actually some case law. Uh, on that, and I'll I'll hand that out. I've got a little handout I'll give you uh, after the cases are heard. It's really not appropriate to be looking at it at this point, mm -hmm. in, but uh, it's just for reference. But in general, the only the only information I could find on self-created hardship is that it used to be a standard process in this state that if an owner bought a lot that was not uh, was a, an existing non-conforming lot in some way, shape, or form. The fact that they bought the lot in that shape or form automatically would prevent them, basically, from ever being granted a variance on that lot. Mm -hmm. That tack changed at some point in and around the early 90s, I believe, um, in that the courts over sort of overturned that whole theory and said that just because someone bought the, the lot and therefore should know about the non-compliance of that lot doesn't necessarily, put, necessarily preclude them from being granted a variance going forward. So that was a big change in the way that uh, zoning boards um, could weigh the evidence because before it was just an automatic no. <laughs> Even though mm -hmm. they could appeal, mm -hmm. you, no, no zoning board would, would approve. The courts ruled that, that that was no longer the case and that that knowledge was only one facet, one one part of your fact finding. It didn't it didn't automatically preclude the granting of the variance, but neither did it make it any easier to get the variance. Okay. That's really the only thing I could find on self created hardship. And did they talk about intent or, or did you see any legal bias around intent when you were doing your research? That you could tell. Um, no. Okay. No. I mean, and, and I think really self-created, you know, self-created hardship was pretty much limited to um, it, it wasn't limited. I, I think the question last time was, does a lifestyle change or something that you do in your life, like purchase a car? Mm-hmm. You know, is that a self-created hardship? I don't think that 
it doesn't seem like that's ever been a real major factor. It's more in what are you going to do with the structure. You know, so, you, so it's pretty much limited to the structure or the use of the land. Not the it's circumstances not, behind it. Not your habits, not okay. your personal habits or personal choices as far as whether you're going to have horses, pigs, cars, you know, that kind of thing. It's, it's more to do with the space and bulk requirements of the lot and what you want to do with So we can't punish the applicant for buying a second car? You can try, but I don't mm. think you'd have good. You know what my response would be to that? <laughs> <laughs> I think Life I do. can be a practical <laughs> difficulty. <laughs> so should we base point to what you're saying is we shouldn't even be considering the fact that she purchased another car and thus she needs to have a two-car garage because she did that. We, get, we need to limit it to what the structure has. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, I think that's the intent yeah. behind it. The intent. I mean, yeah. there's no hard and fast rule on it. Yeah. You certainly could. You, the board... Has the has the um, latitude to, to look at any and all facts that are presented to them. My my suggestion, I guess, based on the research that I've done, is that I don't think you should be putting a lot of weight either way on the fact that somebody either chose to purchase a car or didn't choose to purchase a car. Someone could want to have a two-car garage, even though they only have one vehicle. Correct. Uh, only because it's like most Mainers, we never park our cars in our garage anyway. We've got it full of other stuff. Right, right. <laughs> so, so they may just want it for that reason, right. uh, or because it looks, makes the house more saleable, or makes it look like the other houses on the street. Mm -hmm. I mean, there could be any number of reasons. So, I don't think that the purchase of a car really should weigh into your decision as to whether or not she's met the practical <coughs> difficulty. Test. Yeah. Well, that was something I was struggling with the way the question was worded mm -hmm. yeah. to us. Yeah. And I think I tried to make that point last week about storing stuff in the garage, and I don't uh, last month, and I don't think I made a very good point up around that. So I think that clarification. And if we helps. if we just revisit the definition of practical difficulty, it is a case where a strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which a variance is sought would both preclude the use of the property which is permitted a use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located, and also would result in economic significant economic injury to the app. So your job, I guess, is to decide what is significant in this case, because I think the appellant has given you some evidence that it, there's some economic ramifications to this. So is it, is it significant enough, I guess, would be one way you might want to look at this. And also, is it precluding her the use of a property, a use of the property that is permitted in the district? keeping in mind that she already is using the property in that way. Right. It's more of an expansion of that already <coughs> underway use that she has. Mm -hmm. That's a terrible way to state that. But I know what you mean. My, in my drift. Yeah. Mr. Clark? Oh, excuse me. Yes, Mr. Mishissa. So w with all that, what does strict application mean? Two out of the five? One out of the five? Five out of the five? What, what does strict application mean? Uh, could you give me some more information around your question? Yeah. So it says the ordinance, excuse me. Yeah. When strict application of the provisions of the ordinance would create a practical difficulty, and then we have one, two, three, four. Three would be a practical difficulty and a result of the action taken. So, so what does strict mean? It means, well, we still our voting is still around the seven questions, right? And if you vote no on any one of those questions, you have to vote no overall, is what it comes down to. That's our requirement. Now, the question in part was around that one, uh, let me see which one it was, item number four, was it? It was three and four that you were... Really, right. Four, on. It was four for me, but I think your question was more around three, right? Well, well which happens all the time. Which is a, the practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant or a prior mm -hmm. owner. And you're saying by buying a car, it created a situation where mm -hmm. now she's got to have a variance. I think that was around item number three. And the question is really comes down to your judgment. Do you think? Again, it's based on the information that we got from the town, and they're saying it doesn't appear that buying the car created the situation. 
that the situation could be there by someone saying, I want a second uh, garage or a two-car garage now over one, and that situation really isn't created by the car. It could be just the circumstance. You want a second garage or a second opening for a garage. So I think it's pretty clear that, in my opinion, the practic practical difficulty was not created by this applicant. She now wants a second door or a second garage or a larger garage. And the question is, is the practical difficulty a result of the action taken by the applicant? I don't think so. I don't think it's as a result of her buying that car. And I think it was stated by the town pretty clear that um, that's not the intent behind that question. Mr. Chair. Yes. Maybe I can help with that clarification. Certainly. An example of self-created hardship would be someone who had a large lot and, and decided to build their house in the middle of the lot and, and, and if they had not done that, could have split it and made two lots. Made two lots. Now one. Correct. Permission from the zoning board to create a non-conforming lot because their house was cited. In right. The that was situated or caused by that the applicant. That might be an example Certainly. of self-created hardship. Thank you. Um, and in, to Mr. and Mrs. So's question, I think the strict application is talking about the zoning standards, not, not the criteria that you're deciding to based on. Strict application of the zoning ordinance would say that you have to be 50 feet back from the side line or the rear line or, or whatever. That's what that means. Okay. The strict application right. of the that zoning makes sense. ordinance, not, not the application of these criteria. Okay. Sir, I guess I didn't understand the question, so thank you. <clears throat> so, any other questions or comments from the board? And while you're going through, what I will do is I'll open up the meeting to the public. If anybody wishes to speak to this application, please stand up. And seeing no one that's interested, I'm going to close the public portion of the meeting. We'll go back to the board. Can I just add one more note? Certainly. Um, question four asks about feasible alternatives. Yes. And feasible is an adjective, um, meaning possible, possible, reasonable, or likely. Reasonable also means non expensive. So to keep that in mind, the extents for the tandem is more than going with the, it, getting a variance. That's all. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so, again, the reason why we had issues with this last time is we wanted the applicant to go back and look at more feasible alternatives. At least that was the biggest one for me. And I think she's now gone back to her contractor. They've discussed it in more detail. The, there is a larger cost in modification going in depth rather than width. I think based on the layout, the neighbors are not constructed right on the line. No. They're, they are pushed back off the line, so it will not visibly look like it's crowded. So I think in this particular case, in my opinion, I think they've gone back and done their reasonable amount of work to prove to us or me um, in this case, that there, there are other feasible alternatives, but they are not feasible enough to make me say no on this particular question. That's me personally, and we have to talk to the other yes, members of the board. But I think I, you've I done understand. your due diligence in doing your homework and, and Thank you. searching out your other alternatives. And I appreciate you doing the historical look back as well. I found it very interesting, even with my boundary survey that Steve Ross did for me, um, that I don't live in Green Acres, I live in Hudson something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, really? So the people behind me are in a different development than I'm, I'm in. And being a board like we are, we're quasi-judicial, which means that we do have to make judgment even though we're not judges. Yeah. And the more information you bring to the table for us to make that decision certainly helps us. It gives us legal backing mm -hmm. in our, in I our decision. And I, and I want to work with you yeah. Thank on you. this. Thank you. I think also the information that you brought regarding the appraiser uh, and the realtors and, and the fact that people certainly don't want to buy a house that, that it's not not what they consider normal, um, like like our Mr. Chairman said here. When we have enough information mm -hmm. to make the decisions, then it makes our job a whole lot easier. Right. So thank you very much for, yeah. for doing all that work and, and bringing it to us. There was an article that I did include in my package um, the second time about the tandem garages and how people don't want them, the resale value and and things like that, <coughs> and how zoning boards try to make you go that way. Yeah. And again, our, our decision cannot be around finances because we have um, 
we have guidelines that say we, that's really not what we're against, mm -hmm. and uh, or, or for. It's really we have to make a decision that really has to hold up legally, and it right. can't be based on finances. But we do empathize with the applicant, and we do understand that. But our decision mm -hmm. isn't ultimately made on finances. Right. Uh, again, looking at the board for questions, comments, or a motion. Mr. Marcis. I wasn't here last meeting, but I did watch it on TV. Okay, thank and, you. And uh, the tandem, like Mr. Stock said, I kind of agree with that, that side by side is much better. But there's just three things that I'd like to ask. Sure. To the board. Were there any neighbors' letters opposing this? I don't remember. No, there were not. And this, um, and we're still going to have to go through the questions oh, yeah. one by one. Oh, I it's thought we were just going to address those two. No, but oh, okay. Then so I'll just sit back and okay. Yeah. Again, if if anybody has comments or questions, I'd like to get them out before we start going through that. But we can start going through the questions if you guys are ready. I just want to give you a chance to make sure you get all your opinions stated. Okay, I will start going through the questions, and I will let the applicant address these again. So that we, I know we did it during the last meeting, but I'd like to do it one more time. That way you're on record with the latest information that you've got. Uh, first question is the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and I'm looking for you to give your, your opinion and your, your voice on this so that we have you on record for your legal, um, your side of the story. Okay. So we're on question... It's question one. C1? Yes. Um, or A, A1, excuse me. Let me see what she's got here. She's got the variance is that my, I am an, I'm not on a uh, non-conforming lot. Um, okay. I, yeah, this question we're... And you may w just want to... Run it off the cuff, and I'll, I can kind of walk you through it. Okay. The question says, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of your property and not to general conditions in the neighborhood. Okay. In other words, if everybody in the neighborhood has ledge and you're complaining about ledge, you really have no leg to stand on. Mm -hmm. So it's about this particular property and what is unique about your property that would make it difficult for you to not have a variance. Like around the width, you're looking right, for right. The width is is I have eight feet. I am I have eight feet from my that side set property line, and I have another five feet. So with everything that I've put on there, I've I'm restricted down, and I don't have the proper square footage of twenty two two thousand twenty two hundred whatever the proper size is now. Right. So. And you were looking for a five foot variance. Is that right on the side? Correct. Okay. Five feet. Off the normal 15. Right. And I, the, the unique circumstances of my property is that it doesn't qualify for yard side reduction. Okay. Yeah. It, originally? Yeah. yeah, matter of fact. And what I'll do is I'll read in what you originally had put in in the first appeal from last month. Okay. said, so I'm requesting the variance due to the width of my property. It's 10 feet wide, the minimum street frontage. My home was constructed on the property according to town setback requirements. And my home and existing garage take up 56 feet in width. Right. So that's why you're asking for the variance of 5 feet to get the second garage for the, the two car garage That's width on correct. that property. Right, and and to be able to move around and in, inside the garages, we've addressed last month. We addressed other issues, other ways, but this, just with the makeup of my current garage and my entrance into my home, I need the five feet okay. to be able to move around. Any questions or comments from the board? I'd like to go down the line if you don't mind and get your opinion. Starting with Mr. Crockett. I would agree. I agree as well. It's the property. It's not the neighborhood. Sure. Uh, yeah, I, I agree with that, and I I think that um, I think that she did. I, I would like to make one correction in here. That the however, Certainly. it is 101 feet wide instead of 10 feet. Oh, excuse me. I yeah. I, uh, <laughs> just read that. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I, I saw that too. I'm like. I have to get my glasses <laughs> calibrated. But yes, I'm in agreement. Thank you. 
And I agree as well. It is the circumstance of this property, not general conditions of the neighborhood. Okay. When was the house built? 1996. And when did the... Uh, 15-foot uh, uh, setback go in effect? I was going to say a long time ago. Since the 80s, 85, yeah. something like that? No, 50s. I believe the gentleman... Five setback was in the 50s? The gentleman, when he submitted his kind of plot plan to the town, he did the 15-foot setbacks, okay. and that was in 1990. Okay, I, I agree with that, number one. All those in favor with question one? It's unanimous. Question two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the neighborhood, uh, the fair market value of the abutting properties. And you answered last, expanding my garage from one to two cars will not produce any un undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood. There is a mix of homes with one or two car garages. The uh, expansion from one to two car would not have a detrimental effect either in the use or fair market value of the budding properties and the addition will only be for storage of a second vehicle. That is, that is correct. I, it's going to look like any other home on the street that has a two car garage or one car. It's, it's not going to stand out. Okay. Gentlemen. Saying Mr. Crockett? I would agree. I agree with that as well. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yes, I, I agree completely on it. Again, it fits in with the character, I agree as well. I agree also with it. All those in favor on question two? Unanimous. The practical difficulty is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or a prior owner. And your answer there was, I don't believe that the practical, practical dif difficulty is the result of my actions or a previous owner. The previous owner created a lot with minimum road frontage from the adjacent lot. I built on the lot per town code. Right. And as I explained earlier in my in comments that, um, that I, my opinion is that the practical difficulty is caused by the five-year moratorium that was put on digging up the roads uh, back in 1989 that precluded the previous owner from building his home. Okay. Mr. Chairman, she, she has revised she had, the answers to Oh. And, and that is on record. That is part of your uh, appeal, so. Oh, okay. Thank you. Any questions or comments on item three? I think uh, the discussion that we had this evening clarifies, and I think you are okay on that one as well. So, gentlemen. I I agree with it now from clarification from the town that Good. the vehicle wasn't, that was what I was struggling with. Mr. Dillon? I agree with that, the clarification earlier. It was a good discussion. appreciate it. Mr. Stanhope? I agree from what I've heard from this meeting. I'm cool. being here last month. I'm in agreement. I'm in agreement as well. I think it's, uh, there's no question. I'm in agreement, but I'm going to always have a problem with that number three. But... It was explained properly tonight, but I reserve my judgment for the next time someone has a problem. It could change. Mr. Richard? I would agree as well. Okay. All those in favor? That's unanimous. <coughs> Item four, no other feasible alternative, or alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. And again, I think you updated that answer as well. Yes, I did. Um, but my reapplication, would you like me to read it? You certainly can. Why not? Why not? Okay. Um, okay. One of the suggestions uh, at the last meeting was a portable garage, and uh, they are approximately 10 feet by 17 feet, which would not fit beside the garage. Uh, also, storing a vehicle on grass for a long period of time can cause damage to the underside and allow for animals to nest inside the vehicle. A portable garage sitting beside the driveway wouldn't look good in a neighborhood of nicely kept homes. Uh, staying within the side setback allows for a 22-foot garage, including foundation and exterior wall. Factoring in the 40-inch stairway into the home, the foundation wall, and using a 16-foot door, there is not enough room to, for two vehicles and clearance for door openings and passage through the garage. And then tandem garage requires more lineal feet of foundation and up an eight to 10 feet 
concrete wall due to the slope in the back of my home. It will also require 50% more compacted gravel fill due to the wall depth, much more grading for proper drainage around the current structure and, and not to affect the butters. The roof line direction change will require more materials which with the reduced sunlight on the back of the house creating a valley with a different roof line could lead to moisture or ice issues. Then there is the issue of marketability and resale value. The resale value and marketability of the tandem garage versus a standard car garage is much lower. The town still taxes you the same, but when appraised for the bank, when selling the property, the value added is considerably different. Building a tandem garage would be a significant economic impact on the value of the home. Also, if the tandem garage was built, this could have a detrimental effect on the fair market value of abutting properties since a tandem has less value but considered a two-car garage and was used as a comparable sole property in an appraisal, it could bring the abutters' value down. Gentlemen? This is still a struggling point. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Longstaff, am I correct mm -hmm. my assumption on this that a feasible alternative would be not to build a garage? Or am I not correct on that? Well, I think you're really trying to say, is there any feasible alternative in constructing this space that would be compliant with the zoning ordinance? I mean, yes, obviously not doing anything. <laughs> There's always an alternative. Right now, That's but, correct. Um, I think when, you, when you're applying the feasible alternative, you're looking <coughs> for a different way to accomplish the same thing that they're requesting the variance for without having to have a variance. We're, we're applying our question to the building of the garage as far as a feasible alternative as opposed to not just building one. Right, with the Correct. understanding that if she didn't do it, then she obviously doesn't comply, need a variance, right. And it wouldn't need a variance. So, yeah, that, that's a feasible alternative, but it's not, it's not really addressing this request. Okay. With that clarification, I would agree. I, I just didn't know what letter of the law we were holding it to for the feasible alternative. If we were saying a feasible alternative would be just park the garage, the car outside and not build a garage. But well, if we're looking at it on the structure as to the question, then I would agree that there's no feasible well, alternative. Well, I mean, in one. effect, that would be a feasible alternative, mm -hmm. but I think what you're really looking for is there any way to do what she wants to do in compliance with the and, and if there isn't, then doing nothing is the only <coughs> Again, I think in this case, I'm the alternatives that they have reviewed for me is parking vehicles outside, doing a uh, front-to-back garage arrangement, or the side-to-side. -side. Those are the feasible alternatives. I don't really consider doing nothing as an alternative in this case. So it's really are, are the other feasible alternatives, which is parking outside or parking <coughs> front-to-back, are those really viable? And in my opinion, I think the applicant here has shown that She's done her due diligence. She's reviewed those alternatives, and I don't think it's viable in this point. It can be done. Is it really practical? I don't think so, in my opinion. Yeah, it's just it's one that we always struggle with, the feasible. Certainly, point. certainly. Because technically there is, but mm -hmm. if we're applying it to what she wants to do with her request, then no, there's not based upon the information she's applied. Correct. I think, and I think based on what we've done as a board in historically over the last recent history, I think it would fall in line with what we've done in the past. Uh, unless we uncovered some additional information which would be possible in the future that could change that particular viewpoint on how we decide on this particular question. And that may be the case in the near future. Yes, sir. In regards to the tandem, because of the slope, the grading, it's going to cost a lot more. Did you have a rough estimate on that? He he didn't get into giving me prices. He's just going down and, and just doing the lineal feet, footage and, and things like that. And we've measured out. Um, we took from the back corner of the garage where it comes out and went down to the 24 feet, and it was 
eight, at least eight feet that would be showing above the ground and you need a four foot frost wall. So you're talking 12 feet of concrete, yeah. 14 by 24. <laughs> As well as the affected drainage in the back, right. the slope right. of the lot. Right, right, right. Yeah, and it, we got when did we get heavy rain Friday, and I was down there last night, and it's still squishy in the mm -hmm. back, mm -hmm. the back of my yard. <laughs> I, I'm totally in agreement with that. I was just curious. Mr. Sir, I, I, oh, excuse me, Mr. Stanley. No, that's okay. Um, the only thing I noticed was. The only thing the board maybe should look at is within to stay within the ordinance and the setback would be a 22 foot garage. I mean that would almost be an alternative, you know, feasible alternative. Granted, the applicant doesn't want to do that, but that would be a feasible alternative in my view uh, because that would stay within the ordinance and she would be getting a bigger garage and so forth. But that's just something I think should be looked at, you know. Uh, not saying it should be, you know, strong, but the board probably should look at it as a feasible alternative. And I think the applicant did do that during the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the question yeah, was I, I think there was a stairway or something. There's a three, almost four feet of stair porch inside my garage, so that the current garage is 14 feet right now. Mm -hmm. You chop three feet right off of that because of the stairs. So even 22, I'm down, I'm down under. That's why I did address it in the. Um, Revised thing that the yeah. 20 you were not going to be able to open, open doors, doors. And, mm -hmm. and move around vehicles. If there wasn't an entry from the garage, it would be a different story. But there's a house entry from the garage. Right. It, and I've even looked at that turning the stairs around, something moving that door, but there's just not enough room in front of that to mm -hmm. store a vehicle. Mm -hmm. And if you narrow up that, that uh, landing platform to less than four feet, then I think you're going to run into compliance issues from a, uh, getting a door in there. Um, Mr. Longstaff and I discussed the code and that my stairs are right at code. Right. So that, you know, it would gave me a couple of inches if we really brought it down. I can't remember what the, we talked about, but it's just inches. It's not going to give me feet. Does that help? It does. Okay. The only, I'm sorry. The only <clears throat> question I would have then, would you be willing to Eliminate those stairs. I can't get into my kitchen, my back door. And you, oh, I see. So get, yeah, it's the entry into in. my my. Okay. It's like my back door into my house. Only it's inside the garage. That can mean to be you can't Understand. Yeah. Yeah. Could you climb out a window? <laughs> I got a I got a sliding glass door. I can probably jump out. There you, it, go. you know, is, is it, it, Mr. Longstaff, is that code? Have her block the door. There you go, <laughs> Mr. Stark. No, I, with the with the additional information provided, I'm I'm good with it. I I agree. Thank you. I'm in agreement. I think the applicants uh, proved in their point. Mr. Richard. I agree. I think the uh, word feasible. She explained that nicely, and cost certainly weighs into it. So I agree. I agree also. All those in favor on question four. Again, unanimous. <coughs> Question five, the granting of the variance will not result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties. Um, and I, I'm thinking that your answer didn't change from the last. No, it didn't It didn't change from the last. Um, four, three and four were the only ones that I really changed my, my okay. answer. Okay, I'll read it in anyways because I've okay. got it from uh, uh, this. This being an older neighborhood, some homes set are set closer to the street than than mine, a majority of the homes sit on larger lots. There's no effect on the conformance with surrounding properties. Any comments from the board? Or okay. I agree. Opinions? I agree with the statement. Okay. Agreed. I'm in agreement on that. I'm in agreement as well. You know. And there was no neighbors' letters and being 10 feet. Does that give access to the back part of the property if need be? I mean, it did based yes. on the drawing that okay. we had. Yes, I, do. I still, yeah. still have 10 feet plus. Um, you know, if it was an emergency situation, they could come in through my neighbor's driveway and still access the backyard. Okay. I back. agree with that then. All those in favor on question five? Again, unanimous. Six, the granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably, unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Answer didn't change, and I don't see any effect on the natural mm -hmm. environment. It will be yeah. as it is. Yeah. Okay. Gentlemen? 
I guess, I guess my question on that now, based upon what the applicant has um, brought up, is the wetness behind there. What are we looking at? Anything additional from building this other 10 bay that we're going to be more? I mean, you're going to be a lot less ground to absorb the water and everything. Are we going to be looking at some other detrimental effect to this? Certainly, I think. And again, this is my opinion. By going deeper in the lot, you're going to put more slope on the lot to that drainage area, which is going to make it run off faster, less time to absorb. So looking at the alternatives, going wider to me is better because it will give it more time to soak in and as opposed to just run off to that soft area that she now has in the back. So, And I think by adding the additional fill that it would take to go deeper, it's going to make that slope even higher going towards the back towards that drainage area, so I think it's going to make the condition worse. So I think by picking the alternative that she's gone with, the drainage in that property would be the best case, not the worst case. Now what is the closest neighbor? You had said someone was fairly close to you on one side. Is that the side that the garage is going to expand out into, or is that the other side where someone had built a... Yes, yes. Um, which side? I think in my original packet, um, there's a street view of my home, and I can, if you want to see it, I can walk over. You can see no, approximately how close she is. And that's the property to the right as you face, face from the front? Left. Where the garage no, is face, left. To, to, if, when you face in my garage, it's the property to the left. Right, but there's clearance between your garage and the structures on the neighbors. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. More. She's within 15 feet side back, if not more, on right. her and side. Right, and the person to the right of you, if anything, was closer or not. They're higher than me. Okay. So it all drains down. Okay down the street. The street slopes down. Okay. I would agree based upon the information. I agree as well. agree with the chairman's comments. Yes, I'm in agreement as well. Clearly I am as well. <coughs> I agree also. All those in favor on question six? Unanimous again. And question seven, the property is not located in a shoreland zone, so that one does not apply to your property. No. No, I'm right behind that one. My house was built in the flood of 96, and I didn't have any water in the basement. <laughs> okay, so I'll go right to the overall vote on the property, or I'd like to hear a motion from the board. Move to approve uh, appeal number 2524, as, uh, as stated. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks again for, uh, for all your diligence on getting in. I wish I had known last month. I didn't know what I was getting into. <laughs> <laughs> you did a great Thanks. job. Yes. Thank you very much. I tried to warn you. I tried to <laughs> How difficult we can be? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Well, I didn't know exactly what I needed to cover, but Most people, good education. We, sometimes we don't, so. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Second appeal and final appeal of the evening is Appeal 2527, a special exception appeal for David Densmore of 6 Moose Creek Lane. Accessors parcel R26, uh, parcel 18C, to operate a home occupation for an in-home catering business in our zone. If you'd like to approach, state your name and give us a brief uh, uh, name and your address and give us a brief description of your appeal. <coughs> Hi, I'm Dave Densmore. I live at uh, 6 Moose Creek Lane in Scarborough. And I uh, would like to propose a, uh, that I could open a uh, home catering business using the exi existing accessory apartment. Uh, we're making no changes to the apartment. We are going to use the existing appliances. The business will be a primary baked breads, baked goods, salads, and desserts. Uh, our plan is to deliver all the food to the customers. We will, we may have an occasional pickup, but uh, it will be delivered uh, with very minimal to uh, no traffic, no additional traffic to the road. We are not planning to uh, uh, have any signage for the business. I'm Mary Jo Dennis. Thank you for getting up there as well. It's all good to have support. Any questions from the board? Okay, I'll go to 
um, the town. Can you give me any information, or would you like to give us any information? Sure. I know you've summarized. Um, yeah, just as some background, uh, Mr. Densmore was granted an appeal, uh, number 2225, on November 10th, 2004, for an accessory unit at 6 Bruce Creek Lane. The accessory unit was permitted by special exception at that time, as was, was uh, required by ordinance. Yeah. Uh, we, we no longer require the zoning board to, to uh, approve accessory units. We can do that uh, in the department now. Um, so the accessory unit is not currently occupied. No, it's not. And, um, and so the applicant wishes to conduct that business using uh, the infrastructure that's there in the accessory unit. In doing so, he would then vacate the ability to call that an accessory unit. It would become his home occupation because there's no way he could do both, <laughs> and nor does he intend to. No. <laughs> and, and in order to go back to that, he would have to come back before the board to get approval. Um, actually, in order to go back to having an accessory unit, should he ever wish to do that, mm -hmm. not do the catering business, we could then issue that permit in-house. He wouldn't have to come back okay. to the board. Okay, good, thank but, you. But he can't operate both of them at the same time. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons for that is that his uh, on-site septic, septic system, his subsurface wastewater disposal system, is sized adequately for the accessory unit, which also is adequate for the bakery part of his business, but not adequate for both. both. <laughs> so he's Certainly. limited in capacity in his, in his subsurface wastewater. So, and it only makes sense to do it. The other reason that it's important is that he needs to count all of that area in order to meet the 20% limit on the home occupation, uh, which he couldn't meet if he was just taking 20% of the accessory. So for all of those reasons, he's basically here to say, I'm vacating the accessory unit in favor of the home occupation, which meets the space and bulk criteria Good. for that. So the board needs to needs to know that as part of their uh, decision making process. Okay. A few questions that I have with these kind of businesses okay. is how are you going to get your raw products? How many deliveries do you expect a week or month? We're going to pick them up. We're picking okay. them up. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to do majority deliveries out of the home yeah, to bring them to your clients? Yeah, that that's the uh, intent. We're not planning on having, like, a huge catering business. It's more of, like, home parties for people and then okay. just delivering the food. To and them. you don't think people are going to be picking up? Uh, you know, maybe they'll come down for, like, a loaf of bread if I do a loaf of stuff bread, but it's not. It's real minimal. It's more of us going to deliver mm -hmm. to people. And what I'd like is, because if, if you're going to go that way, if you say you're not going to have people yeah. coming, that's one thing. Okay. But if you okay. believe it could happen, you ought to give us an idea of what you think the volume sure. might be so that we have it I on record. I think that the volume would be two to ten people possibly a week. Okay. That's if that. No, that's good. Yeah. Because then we, now we have something to measure yeah. by. Yeah. Okay. Any questions from the board or comments from the board? Again, this is, appears to me to be pretty straightforward. Um, you have every right to have an in-home business. Mm -hmm. nice part about this is you've already got the space. Yeah, it's and it, great. And it meets your needs, so yep. that's yeah. good for you. That yeah. makes, certainly makes it financially easier well, for you. Well, that is one of the big things for us, right? I mean, we built the apartment when my dad was alive and he lived with us until he mm -hmm. passed away, and we thought, well, why don't we use the space instead of trying to rent someplace somewhere? Right, so so good for you folks. Yeah. And, of course, you know you have to do your normal permitting Absolutely. and all that stuff. Absolutely, yeah, right. that's next step. Yeah, good, good for you. Okay. And uh, again, I, I look at it as pretty straightforward. <coughs> they don't have a lot of uh, issues with traffic, which is going to be beneficial. Right. Um, and it's going to be delivered out of the home, so you're not going to have, you know, you're not, not going to have. And a lot we're of on a private there. road, yeah. so we're the only house on the road. And you are not requesting a sign. No, no. no. Not seeing any questions from the board. I'm going to open up to the public for any questions or comments. Seeing there's no one that's here to speak to this, we will close that back. Um, one thing I didn't ask on the last appeal, but I will ask on this one, are there any uh, letters from the public? Okay, so there's no public comic on, comment on this. Um, we can start going through the questions if there's no uh, questions or comments from the board. They do get one sign with the accessory unit, right? They, uh, with their home occupation? Yes, yeah, I, I think with the home three, occupation, I'm sorry. Yeah. Th is it three by five? Is there? Okay. There, there, if okay. you if you did choose to have a sign, that would be in your uh, your right to do so. Okay. And again, it just has to meet the criteria, and it's a certain size. Okay. And, uh, and I think we're feet from 
Right, in, in location. So okay. Okay. Uh, that is in your right. If you want to do that, just let us know. All right. Okay. I have a question here to the uh, building inspector. When someone does something like this, uh, if they're going to be baking in there. Do you have to go in and check the electrical out prior to this? No. Um, not particularly because it's already existing. As a as a it's not home they're though. installing. As a home, not a business. But they're they're ba it's the oven. They're going to have a food handler's license, and as right. a food, part of the food handler's license, they're going to get a state inspection for the stove well, and all of the yeah. baking stuff. Electrical. But those, those the state doesn't check the electrical. Sure they do. Hmm. They'll check the entire kitchen. But okay. it won't be any different than the property, right? Is there a specific concern that you're trying well, to Well, no, I mean, if they're going to, I mean, if you've got an oven in your in your house, I mean, if, they, if they're if they in the catering business and it takes off and they don't change anything and they're going to a bigger oven, does the building inspector get involved via the food handlers? How does it, how does it work? Kind of educate me on there's so, so once they get it, it's an existing facility, mm -hmm. they're not uh, they're not pulling a building permit for anything. So there's no, there's, they're going to bake in the oven that's in the facility. It's already there. It's been used. There's no no reason for us to be in there for that. If they're doing a remodel and changing those appliances, then we would go in and inspect that. Yes. If they were adding new electrical or more electrical outlets, they would have to pull an electrical permit. We would go in and inspect that. So as the business got bigger and they needed something bigger, they'd have to come back. Right have to come now, back everything is yeah. existing. There's no, nothing for us to inspect Okay. <coughs> until they pull a permit for something new or additional. That's what I was wondering. Okay. What I'll do is we'll start going through the questions for, uh, for a special exception. And I see you've given answers to the special exception questions. What I'll let you do is discuss those, or you can, they're already on record in your okay. package, so you can basically summarize what you said okay. and, and abridge it if you'd like to. Okay. The first question is A, the proposed use will not create unsanitary or unhealthful conditions by reason of sewage disposal, emissions to the air, water, or other aspects of design of our, or operation. No, it will not. We're yeah. just using it as a small business. And we'll come back and we'll, uh, I'm, again, I, I maybe I'm simplifying it and I want to know your opinions. I, I think we can go over the overall answers and uh, do a, a summary vote at the end. I don't think we need to go through the individual questions uh, if you guys are on the board or, or you folks on the board are okay with that. If I have a question, I'll raise it. Please do. Uh, the second question is, proposed use will not create unsafe vehicular or pedestrian traffic conditions when added to the existing or foreseeable traffic in its vicinity. No, it will not. Okay, again, you, were, you stated on record, you said worst case, eight or ten per week. Yeah. I think uh, that's a reasonable volume for an in-home business, and uh, I don't see any issues with that myself. The proposed use will not create public safety problems, which would be substantially different from those created by existing uses in the neighborhood or require a substantially greater degree of municipal <coughs> fire or police protection than existing uses in the neighborhood. Yeah. No, it won't. Be, we're the only two living in the house, and we're right. the only two working. And you're not changing any of the equipment, so I don't think it creates any more risk no. to fire. Uh, proposed use will not result in sedimentation or erosion or have an adverse effect of the water supplies. No, it will no. not. We're using existing, and we have, as Brian stated, we have enough. The septic's fine. And the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to the physical size, visual impact, intensity of use, proximity to the structures, or density of development. Right. There's no difference. It looks like every other home. Correct. And you're not changing that not yeah. from current. If located in the Shoreland Zone, and I don't believe you are. No, we're not. Right. So that one does not apply. Uh, uh, applicant has sufficient right, title, or interest in the site proposed used to be carry out the proposed use. Yes. In other words, if we put something on you as a big restriction financially, you are willing to do what we ask. Okay. Uh, the applicant has the technical and financial ability to meet the standards of this section and comply with the conditions imposed by the board. Yes. And the proposed use will be compatible with the existing uses in the neighborhood with respect to generation of noise and hours of operation. Yes. And that's one thing that we did that did not ask yes. you is what do you plan on running um, for hours? During the day, yeah. you know, normal standard. Eight to five. Five, yeah. you know. Eight to five. Yeah. Or yeah. Could be earlier. Yeah, but not at but night. Not, no. 
We generally ask for specific time frames when we're doing a home occupation. Okay. Okay. So oh, we would okay. say eight to five. Okay. Well, what would be the latest that you would allow a pickup from a customer? Uh, I hadn't really thought about six. that. Yeah, maybe okay. six. Okay. Yeah. Still reasonable. So eight to six is a reasonable yeah. envelope for yeah. you? It mm -hmm. is. Okay. That, that eight to six, that's just for people to come pick stuff up or for us to baking. deliver. Yeah. Right. I, I think they can be in operation eight to six. I think that's fair. They could still be baking at that point. And but I mean, they couldn't start at six in the morning. It's no reason they couldn't. There is no reason they could. No, it's no, all I, internal just, use. So I'm just asking because we're putting a, a yes. time frame on it. Yeah, I don't think a time frame needs to be put on. Uh, Most bakers bake at four And when I say when I say that's hours that's of operation, good. it's it's people getting. coming in and going. Yeah, you can. We know when early. You certainly could wake up at four and start baking if you chose to. I don't think good, good point. the town's going to be coming down there at 4 o'clock to check to see if you're baking. If they do, they can have a slice. <laughs> I'll be on the doorstep. All right. Uh, that, that was the question. So uh, any comments from the board mm -hmm. or looking for Move a motion? To approved field 25. Oh, I got I to wait a minute. I yes, sir. Some, oh. some, some couple of things. Certainly. Being a small business owner yeah. as I am, now that you're going to have the public you're inviting the public into your mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. as a business. Mm -hmm. I recommend you talk to your homeowner's insurance and straighten that I out. I have that on the list. Yes. Perfect. I do. Perfect. That, that's a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there a reason why you don't want to jump into going right up on Route 1? And yeah, of course. Well, <laughs> well I, as a small businessman that's on Route 1, I understand completely what yeah. you're saying. So. Yeah. I mean, our, our Good luck. Good luck. Yeah. And when you get bigger, maybe you can come up uh, on Route 1. We would love it. We would love it. Sure. That's it for me. So questions, comments, or a motion? Uh, I just had before Mr. Dillon makes his final motion. <laughs> um, I just had one question for you folks. I don't know. I don't think we addressed it, but maybe we did. Yeah. The trash disposal, are you going to need yeah. bigger receptacles or are you going to be just no. working within no. the confines? We're just working with what we have. Yeah, yeah we, we should, should be, be able to. And you don't anticipate any more, like if your business grows to a certain yeah. point. Well, well you know, it's just like anything. If it grows, it would be great to be able to expand and move out of there or something else. But mm -hmm. at this point, no. And, and now that you remind me, one, one last question. Sure. Uh, what would you imagine for having inventory on site for? I mean, flour, flour sugar. sugar. Yeah. Would you have more than a week's supply on hand, do you believe, stored on property? I don't know that we would, you know. No. I mean, we buy our flour in bulk, and that's probably the biggest thing that you would buy in bulk, maybe right. like 25 pounds, you know, so. Okay. Question? I'd like to make the motion to uh, approve this as a small businessman. Let me find the... Uh, the number here. 2527? That's the one. All right. <laughs> okay. I'll second that. All those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good, Thank luck. You. Good luck. Appreciate Good luck. it. All right. Let me get up and roll, and I'll bring in some samples. <laughs> <laughs> I'll second that. Encourage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not easy owning a small business. So I don't know. Takes a lot of work. You don't have to say anymore. <laughs> oh, that would have been nice. Yeah. 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 Good luck. Good luck, folks. Uh, that was the final appeal for the evening. I'm um, looking for the board. If you have any comments, or uh, again, I'd like to thank Mr. Stanhope for joining us. I appreciate having some fresh blood. <coughs> It's always good to get new viewpoints and, and uh, new opinions, so welcome aboard. Thank you. Again, feel free to state your opinions. We're open. We want to hear it. And uh, thank you. Yes, this is the information on self-created hardship. Just reference materials. Yeah, reference materials, but it does. Does this go as part of our record so that... I don't know how we'd get it on record, but yeah, we can certainly put a one page document in the file first. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for doing the research. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'd like to make a comment that, that the uh certainly. that the uh comments made prior to us meeting from the town are real helpful to me. So. Yeah, me
these ones. So keep it coming. They, yes. They, they really make make yes. me more aware of what's going on. Okay. Move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Everybody have a great evening. <laughs>